In today's video, we're going to start by creating a closed transfer system to transfer beer from my SS Brewtech to my small 1.75 gallon keg. To start, what we'll look at is the fermenter. So we have in this specific fermenter, we're going to install a 90 degree bar that has the half inch inner diameter to connect to silicon tubing. Then at the bottom of the fermenter is a mini ball valve that's 3 8 inch. Next, we're going to attach to the 90 degree bar valve the silicon tubing that's a half inch inner diameter, and we'll clamp that at one end. Then, as we follow the tubing down, we'll reach the next point where we'll clamp that to the T valve where those bars will be installed. From there, the T valve on the left that will connect to the keg through a gas line, and on the right will be another half inch silicon tubing that can act as a blow off tube during fermentation. From there, if we continue as we said, we'd clamp all those tubes in place, travel from the T valve to the gas line through a 5 16th inch inner diameter tubing that's connected to the keg with a gray quick connect. On the other side of the keg, it would be connected with a black quick connect to the liquid outpost, and then that would be connected with another tubing that would be similar to keg, line, keg tubing, which is 5 16 and that would connect to the mini vol valve at the bottom of the fermenter. From there, what we would see is if we pressurize the keg on the bottom with 2 to 5 psi of CO2, with everything open flowing, the CO2 would flow from the keg up to the T valve through that line and then push into the fermenter. The ferm because the fermenter would be filled with beer, and the beer would be able to flow from that bottom of the fermenter to the keg, the beer would flow downwards into that keg. And as you would see over time, CO2 would fill up the fermenter and beer would fill up the keg until it's completely filled with beer. And at this point, you could weigh out the amount to know when your keg is full. For my 1.75 gallon keg, that takes me about 15 and a half pounds. So if you move on to the installation, we'll start with the lid. So for that lid, right, we have a hole that's pre-drilled into it. We have this 90 degree bar valve that has a hex on it. That is, so if you unscrew that, there's an O-ring on the inside of the bar valve. Sliding that through the hole and taking the hex nut to screw that into place to secure it so that when we do install everything, it's airtight and so oxygen can't come in during fermentation. Flipping it over, we can see what this looks like after we tighten it a little bit. You can see that this is where the bar would go and this is where the tubing is going to connect next. So we pick that up, put that on top of the fermenter, and we're going to seal that in place after we align it up correctly because we want to have a place for the hoses to go. So there's four spring clamps. You're touching the front and the back at the same time. The opposite allows it to go in without kind of wobbling or anything. Next we'll grab the half inch tubing, putting that over the bar and then taking with that a small hose, or the hose clamp that fits over it. And then we're taking out a screwdriver, we'll tighten that down until it's fully, fully installed. Then if you look at the ball valve, what we have here is there's a variety of different things. So the inner diameter of this T ball valve is a half inch NPT. And so that's all of the barbs that have to connect to this have to be that same type. We need two half inch uh, male NPTs on one end and the other half of that has to be the half inch hose barb. The other one, so these two will go one to the ke the fermenter and one will go to the keg. The one on the top left is going to go to the gas line so when we pressurize the keg this is where this gas will come in. Okay for this we have a T valve one of the, of the half inch barbs is already installed. We'll install the top one which will go to the top of the fermenter where the blow-off tube was and then on the, the other one, which I have right here, that will go to the gas line. The T-valve can turn, so it will go one from the blow-off into the gas line. All right, then we'll pick up the T-valve with everything installed, attach the blow-off tube to the top of that, and again, this is where you'd want to attach a hose clamp to secure it in place. Then we'll grab out our, our gas line, which will attach to the 5 16th one that's located on the left of the T-valve. This will also come with another hose clamp that will have to screw down into place after we follow the whole hose. Just grab out a screwdriver and screw this tight to secure it in place. This one already came with a gray gas connect on the other side, which that will go to the keg in the future. Taking the other 
hose, you may want to make this one cut so this is the size, but we'll install that on the right side of the T-valve. Then we're going to pressurize the keg, as I said before, with about 2 to 5 PSI of carbon dioxide, assuming everything has already been cleaned and purged ahead of time. As you can see, we can follow the, that from the tank into the CO2, or into the keg. Moving it once it's fully pressurized, and then installing the liquid line. So this will go in the bottom of the mini ball valve and the bottom of the fermenter. It does take a little bit of finessing to get it in there. And then we're basically going to do this pretty quickly. So we want to connect the gas line on the inpost of the keg. We want to attach the black to the outpost or the liquid side. Now this is going to start to have pressure, so you open the ball valve and the T-valve should already be set up. If you place the keg on the ground, this will help assist in that process. So we start from the top, the beer flows down through the fermenter, through this tubing, until it reaches the keg. Now if this is beer, you'd see that flowing. And then it would flow from there, the gas is being displaced by the liquid and pushing up through until it reaches the T-valve. And turning from the T-valve up, as we can see, it's open to the fermenter and there it would go into the barb. And that's it, that's the whole setup. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe down below. If you found any of this helpful to reducing oxygen in your beer, smash that like button. I'll see you in the next one.